Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I would like to show you how to easily train and deploy Hugging Face models on Amazon SageMaker. And in fact, we're going to go full circle. We're going to start from a pre-trained model and a data set uh, that I take from the Hugging Face Hub. We're going to fine tune the model on SageMaker and deploy it and test it on SageMaker as well. And then I'm going to push the model that I've trained back to the model hub. And then using the transformers library, I will download it again just to show you uh, how easily you can just go through that whole process. And finally, I'll show you how you can deploy two SageMaker straight from the hub, right? Uh, without training. So just, you know, training models, pushing them back to the hub, downloading them again, deploying them, the full story. Okay, let's get started. First of all, we need to install some packages. Of course, we need the SageMaker SDK and we need the Transformers library and the datasets library from Hugging Face, some widgets for progress indicators and the Hugging Face hub package, uh, which adds uh, API and a CLI to interact with the Hugging Face Hub. So we'll definitely need that, okay? Uh, next, I need to install Git LFS, so large file support for Git, because as you probably know, uh, all models and, data and datasets are stored on the Hugging Face Hub in Git repos, and there are large files, right? So I need uh, Git LFS, and for some reason, it's not available in the standard repo uh, that, um, uh, studio can access so I need to download that package myself and install it okay but anyway simple enough and then I can quickly check I have the latest versions for everything so it looks like we're fine here and now we can talk about the actual problem we want to solve so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, start from uh, a product review data set that is actually hosted on the hugging face hub and I'm gonna download it, process it a little bit, and I'm gonna use it to fine tune a uh, um, classification model, right? For sentiment analysis, right? Which is a really common uh, task that uh, NLP is used for, okay? So pre-processing is actually pretty simple. First of all, uh, download the data set from the hub, okay? And if I look at the first example from the, from the training set, I can see I have a uh, English text and it's actually Thai language here uh, and a star review, right, from one to five and something that tells me correct, zero, one, which really says um, this translation, this English translation is actually a, a correct translation for this Thai uh, review. So here, uh, I've decided to train an English language model. So the, the pre-processing I'm going to do is quite simple. I'm, I'm going to drop the Thai language in there. I'm going to just keep the uh, English language product review and I'm going to uh, keep the star review as well. Okay, fine. So to make things a little simpler, uh, I'm going to turn this into a binary classification problem, uh, but you could keep uh, these as a, as a multi-class problem if you wanted to. So I have, I've decided that four star and five star reviews are positive and get a, a one label. And uh, so one, two, three star reviews get a zero label, okay? But again, uh, you, you could ignore that and just uh, try and build a, uh, a multi-class classifier if you wanted to, okay? So apply this to the training set and the validation set. Okay, no, now I have the, the labels uh, feature, which is set to either zero or one. Um, and in order to eliminate the Thai language review here, uh, I actually need to flatten this translation uh, feature because we can see it's nested JSON, right? So that's what I do here, flatten it, right? So now I've got translation.en, translation.th, and I can just remove the columns that I don't need, right? Uh, and uh, rename the translation.en column to text, which is what the, the model expects. Okay, so now 
my dataset looks like a labels feature, 01, and a text feature with the English language review. Okay, so that's everything uh, I need to do here. The next step, of course, is to tokenize um, that data. And I can download the pre trained tokenizer, and I've decided to go with this model, but you could use uh, plenty of other ones, right? So, tokenize the training set, tokenize the validation set. And if I look at one of the tokenized um, instances, of course, I see the tokens here, the input IDs, right? Uh, the zero token means uh, it's empty, right? And of course, I've got the attention mask with one telling me to consider, or telling the model, I should say, telling the model to actually consider the token and zero to ignore it, okay? And I still have my labels and I still have my text, okay? Right, and which I'm deciding to drop here, but we could probably keep it. So now that data is ready, uh, I'm almost ready to train. Uh, first, I need to upload the data sets to S3, okay? And I'm using the default bucket for SageMaker here. And well, I can just define a path in that bucket for the training set and the validation set and use uh, that super convenient uh, save to disk uh, API, which will actually here save to S3, upload to S3, okay? And now I've got my two input path uh, for training and validation. Okay, so data is ready, and now we can move on to training. Um, so I need a training script, as you would imagine, and here it is. It's actually pretty simple, okay? Uh, it uses the, the trainer API uh, in the transformers library. And let me show you this part, right? You can see, right, uh, loading the model, loading the tokenizer, setting the training arguments, creating the trainer instance training etc okay so that's really vanilla hugging face code that you could run uh, on your laptop completely outside of SageMaker. and the only thing i did here really to uh, uh, adapt it to SageMaker is to um, receive uh, command line arguments uh, that uh, and hyperparameters um, that SageMaker will pass to to the script and we'll see those in a second okay this is called script mode and this is basically how SageMaker runs uh, framework code for TensorFlow, PyTorch, Hugging Face, Scikit-Learn, etc. Okay, take your existing code, grab um, hyperparameters as command line arguments, and obviously read the location of the training data set and the validation data set, which are stored in environment variables that SageMaker automatically sets, automatically sets. Okay. Um, and that's about it, right? So then we load the data set and we run our hugging face code, okay? And finally, of course, we need to save uh, the model and we need to save this in a well-known location uh, so that SageMaker can then upload it to S3, okay? Now there's only one gotcha, I guess, here. Um, please, when you use the trainer API, please make sure you pass the tokenizer as well. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be saved. So when you actually save the model to S3, it's going to save just the model. And of course, that's inconvenient because if you want to use the model uh, later on, you'll need the tokenizer, right? So just make sure to grab the tokenizer as well and pass it to the trainer API. Even though we don't um, explicitly use it, uh, that'll guarantee it gets saved, okay? So that's the code. Uh, Hyperparameters are simple. We're going to fine tune for one epoch with this model uh, and a batch size of 32. Okay. Now we have everything we need to get the training job going. So we configure the hugging face estimator in the SageMaker SDK. We pass the location of our training script. Uh, we pass the hyperparameters. Uh, we set the versions of transformers, the versions of PyTorch the version of uh, Python uh, and what instance we want to use. Okay, so here I'm going to use uh, a single GPU instance. Okay, just uh, uh, one instance, so just one GPU on this job. And I'm going to enable spot instances, which is a really good way to uh, uh, keep costs under control. Okay, if you're not familiar with spot instances, um, basically 
it's a way to get access to uh, extra capacity available in EC2 uh, at a very deep discount and 70% uh, is quite typical, okay? Uh, and the actual feature is called Manage Spot Training in SageMaker, so you can go and, and look it up, okay? And then we just call Fit, passing the location of the training set in S3 and the validation set in S3 too, okay? And off it goes. Okay, so it's going to train for a little while. And we can actually see here, uh, I trained for a little more than 2,800 seconds, but thanks to spot instances, and we did get that 70% discount. And believe it or not, I did uh, <laughs> write that 70% number here before running the training job. Maybe you won't believe me, but that's that's a fact. Um, and so we only get billed for 857 seconds, okay? which is about, yeah, it's a little less than 15 minutes, okay? Which means that this job cost probably around a dollar, okay? Which, is, which isn't which is bad, okay? So we just paid for uh, exactly what we used here, all right? Fine. Okay, so now we have a trained model. It's saved in S3, and we can deploy it on, uh, on a managed infrastructure. Once again, this time we'll use a, a, a reasonably sized uh, CPU instance, okay? And so after a few minutes, we have an HTTPS endpoint that we can invoke. So we could use any HTTPS library for that, um, or we can use the predict API in the SageMaker SDK, but that's really HTTP posting to, uh, to the endpoint, okay? So we built a sentiment analysis model. Let's try a positive product review first. And uh, so invoking our endpoint, we see the label is uh, label one, which means, which means positive with a very high score. And accordingly, we can try a very negative review, which ends up being uh, predicted as a zero. So very negative with a very negative score, okay? And when we're done testing, we can delete the endpoint and off it, you know, away it goes and we, we stop paying for it, okay? So that's really all there is if you want to train and deploy with managed infrastructure um, on SageMaker, okay? Super simple, um, key features, script mode in SageMaker to adapt your code for the SageMaker environment, and I guess manage spot training to, uh, to get that sweet discount, okay? So go and look those up. All right, but let's not stop there. So. We have this model that we trained and deployed. It's stored in S3, and we could want to push it to the Hugging Face Hub, you know, to archive it or share it with uh, with other other people. So how do we do that? So first of all, of course, we need to log in to the Hugging Face uh, to the Hugging Face Hub. Okay, and well, that's just very simple. We just need to run that Hugging Face CLI login command. Okay, which comes from that Hugging Face Hub package that I installed, and you can enter your credentials, okay? So these are the hub credentials, right? Not your AWS credentials, of course. Okay, so once we've logged in, um, we can create a new repository on the Hugging Face Hub, right? So uh, Hugging Face CLI repo create, and that's the name I'm using, and I can clone this repo uh, to my studio instance, okay, so it's cloned uh, locally. I guess we can see it here, yeah. All right. So now that we've created the repository, uh, we need to go and fetch the model artifact uh, corresponding to the training job we just ran, okay? So we can easily find its location in S3, just like that, okay? Model data on the estimator. Okay, so first copy it and then extract it to the repository we just created. And we see all the usual files. Next, I will just add the files to the Git repo, commit them and push them, okay? Nothing complicated here, right? And now uh, I have this model on the hub. And in fact, if I go to my hub page, I can see a new repository and I can see the files that I just committed and pushed, okay? So now it's just another Hugging Face model 
which means I can use it in different ways. So let's see what we can do here. Of course, I can use the Transformers library to uh, download it <laughs> again from the hub to my uh, studio instance, okay, using the auto star API. So in this case, auto tokenizer and auto model for sequence classification. And well, I'm sure you've seen this before. If you if you work the Transformers library, just pass the, the name of the repo and that's it, right? We uh, create that tokenizer and that model. Another way to use it uh, is to use it directly with a pipeline API, right? And I can just say, hey, I build me a sentiment analysis pipeline based on this model, which is a sentiment analysis model. And I can use the classifier as is, right? And just predict my two samples again, the positive one and the negative one, right? So now I'm working locally, but I'm, I'm fetching uh, the model that I trained um, and, and pushed to the hub, right? So same uh, exact same way um, as any other hugging face model and there's another way i could use this model i could go and deploy it uh, from the hub directly okay so let's ignore the fact that i just trained it we could say wow okay there's this model on the on the hub that i want to deploy on a SageMaker endpoint not not on my local instance i want to put it on an endpoint i want to test it and it's very, very easy as well. So um, basically you need to point at the, the model repo and the task type. And then you create that hugging face model object, right? Uh, passing the name of the model, uh, Transformers version, PyTorch version, uh, Python version, right? And, and from now on, it's uh, business as usual. This is equivalent, right? Um, this is equivalent to, to uh, the estimator that we had a, a few cells above, right? And we can just call deploy, right? Again, passing an instance type. And this, is get, this gets deployed to an endpoint, exactly uh, like we've done um, uh, when, when we deployed after training, okay? So the only difference is instead of training, we just grab the model directly from the hub, okay? But then the deploy API is the same. Okay, and obviously, as you would expect, uh, I can predict again uh, using the predict API and get some results and delete the, the endpoint when I'm done, right? So we've really gone full circle here. We started from a pre-trained model on the hub and a data set, and um, we wrote uh, hugging face code to fine tune the model on the data set. And we ran this inside SageMaker on managed infrastructure, okay, using script mode and, and, and a managed GPU instance. And we used a spot instance for a pretty sweet discount. We deployed the model on a SageMaker endpoint, predicted with it. Uh, we pushed it back to the hub, okay, using the uh, hugging face CLI. And then uh, you saw how you can uh, use it again uh, in, a, in a Jupyter notebook, right? Uh, just working with the Transformers library, working uh, locally here in studio, and of course, how to redeploy it again uh, on, uh, on an endpoint for uh, testing or production. So you can see that cycle is, is super simple. Um, you know, it, it all fits in a notebook, and this is actually very generic uh, code. So, uh, you know, feel free to uh, grab this notebook. I'll put the link in the video description and, and reuse it with different models, different task types. Uh, I mean, you've got all the, all the moving parts here to go and experiment uh, with hugging face model without managing infrastructure. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you today. I hope this was uh, useful. Uh, so see you soon with more videos. And until then, keep learning and keep rocking. Bye-bye.